Hey guys, how is everyone doing today? I thought I'd uh, hop in the way of the hunter uh, and do a bit of a, a shooting guide, shot placement guide. I've done these before, but uh, I do realize uh, that once in a while I have to revisit some topics and uh, go over the basics. There are people joining the game uh, all the time, joining the channel all the time, and I'll see comments, nice friendly comments come up and how people appreciate the videos and uh, trying to sort out the game. Uh, but I often forget um, about sort of the basics. I get kind of all focused on uh, the more advanced mechanics, all the little things, how, you know, what makes the game work and all that uh, uh, fun stuff. And I thought I would uh, go over a bit of uh, advice uh, that I have found to improve a shot placement. So it's kind of a updated guide uh, to shot placement so this is sort of um all the things i've learned uh that way of the hunter has that can uh help players out here so we're just in the grasslands my favorite little relaxing place to hunt and let's see now what should we start with i think what we'll do is actually pop into the encyclopedia because one of the strong points of way of the hunter is it's a 3d modeling of the damage uh, the bullet cam that everybody's, uh, most people are impressed with anyways. The the actual damage model itself uh, is a little gamified, uh, but we'll get into that a little later. But the actual trajectory of the bullets and how it travels and the dam and, well, the power of the bullet uh, and the organ placement is uh, really well done. Uh, so if you didn't know, uh, this was not when the game came out. This was added a little later. We can pop into the encyclopedia here, and if you've unlocked the animal, let's go to, you know, our favorite uh, white-tailed deer here. And down at the bottom, there'll be a button for inspect. So you hit the inspect button, you'll get the excellent 3D model of uh, white-tailed deer. And you can, uh, down here, select show organs. So one of the best ways to learn shot placement is uh, uh, this screen right here, because you can rotate it around. And out of all hunting games, I don't think any hunting game you really have, like they have the organs all modeled and everything like that, but they don't really have, you know, just a place where you can just rotate the model around and look. So what happens if you have a white-tailed deer on your screen in your sights? You can just come in here, because it'll pause the game, and just rotate the model to how you're... Uh, approaching the deer. So here's a quartering away shot and a broadside. And then you can see where to hit. So as you can see, the lungs are uh, quite large. Uh, as for beginners, typically uh, we just recommend just go for the lungs. As you can see, they're quite large. And uh, they're not don't really go for the heart shot. I mean, hit the heart, that's just sort of bonus. Um, but yeah, for beginners, I would recommend definitely uh, aiming for the lung and come in here and just sort of inspect the animal that uh, you're about to shoot and my best uh, advice here this is kind of assisting it because we used to not have this how i would line up my shots is uh, this is how i found best because if you if you youtube shot placement and like hunting games or anything like that uh, you get all sorts of advice and it's good advice but it never really, really solved my shooting problem. Uh, people will give you spots on the the outside, uh, like on the skin and the fur to aim at, uh, like the armpit here and things like that. Uh, the problem is aiming, like for here, is that if they're quartering away and you use that same point, all of a sudden the angle doesn't quite work. Like it still works here. Uh, but it doesn't take into account, like, if you're aiming for, like, the broad side and you're aiming at the, the armpit kind of thing, you'd get the heart. But if it's quartering away and you aim at the armpit here, the director actually goes in front of the heart. Uh, so if you're aiming at points on the surface of the animal, on its skin, it doesn't take into account the actual 3D model of it, how deep all the organs are. And that can play a factor in in the angle as you can see from that sort of example um, here now for deer it's not a, a huge issue because the lungs are so large and they're you know they're, they're sort of deep in there but they are more to the surface if you go hunt um, like lions for example and some of the predators the the lungs will actually sit they're really thin and they'll sit far deeper in uh, so 
then it really becomes a factor uh, because when you're doing an angle shot or something like that, you have to factor in uh, the fact that the, the lung is not on the surface. Um, it, is, it is farther in, and some animals have much smaller and thinner lungs, and they're, uh, they're deeper in, and it really plays a factor when you start trying to do hard shots because uh, they are quite difficult. Uh, the angle changes because it is sitting in the, the middle of the animal. Uh, so the best advice I have for that uh, is when you're picturing the animal is to picture this. Like when you're lining up your shot, picture the 3D model. The, uh, when the game came out, we'd never had that, but um, I'd learned that actually from, uh, I think it was a mobile hunting game I was playing. You could turn on like x-ray vision and <laughs> see the organs and things like that. And I found out that uh, yeah, if I'm lining up a shot in Way of the Hunter and I sort of just imagine the 3D x-ray model of it, and I can see like through the animal it, that drastically Im uh, improved how I, I did the shots. Uh, so that bit of a ramble there is my one tip <laughs> kind of combined together. Um, yeah, one tip to uh, to improve shooting is to, you know, use what it works, whatever hints or tips or anything that you found that, that help you. But uh, for me, the best was to uh, picture that 3D model there because I was having trouble with the the fact that the angle changes, uh, the fact the organs aren't on the surface. Right? It does. Uh, it does make a change. So keep that in mind when we are going to be placing a shot. I'll be uh, sort of talking through it. The next piece of advice I have is the uh, rifle use. The uh, the, the weapon choice. Now, there's all sorts of different recommendations. And, oh, we got some mule deer here. They're going to be coming out to drink uh, with the wind. Let's see if I, I'm going to hang out in this tower. This is a nice little tower here to watch them. I come out. But is the, the rifle choice? Is uh, sort of what you're going to... Some people will recommend using a lower caliber to sort of force you to learn how to shoot. Or, uh... You know, test out the shots. A couple little foxes here. And what I'd actually recommend is a stronger caliber, actually. And the reason I recommend that is it's really hard to learn shot placement and improve your skills if you're not seeing the harvest screen. So if you're trying to learn on a lower caliber, like a 243 or something like that, uh, you'll be doing these shots, but if you're... You know, if you haven't learned enough yet, you'll be making these shots and not dropping the animals, and then you'll never see how what your mistake is, like where the bullet went, what you missed. Uh, like you need that harvest screen, that bullet sc uh, bullet camera to actually see how to improve. So I do not recommend using the lower calibers uh, when you get started. So I would actually recommend the SM12-300. The 338's a bit too much overkill. It's a little too easy. Um, so it doesn't really quite teach enough. Uh, but the 300 is still overpowered, but at least it, you know, it, it's got a balance, uh, like a beginner's balance of doing enough damage to the lung, but still needing the, the uh, an appropriate shot placement anyways. So I do recommend the, the SM12-300 over the, the 300 along the Remington, just because the Hunter Sense dot is smaller. We bring that up here it's uh, fairly small in the styre weapons i don't actually recommend using the hunter sense dot but uh, we'll get into that also in a moment but even if you'd place a bad shot uh you still have the uh a good probability of knocking out another organ like the stomach the intestines liver hitting an artery something like that so even if you're missing your shot placement you'll still be able to see the harvest screen to be able to analyze the shot and uh, see what happened. So we'll do some um, practice shots here to sort of talk through it. And I, of course, have other advice, lots and lots of advice. Um, come to an area, of course, to, to practice your shooting. I can't recommend the grasslands enough. Uh, come here just before, just kind of what I'm doing. Uh, any of these towers along the grasslands. Uh, right before 11 a.m. and you'll be able to watch the white tail mule walk out and it's really good to do uh, I do recommend um, playing on hiker difficulty 
Uh, don't be don't be ashamed or worried that you're not getting better at the game if you're playing on hiker difficulty. Hiker difficulty still has enough challenge to it. Uh, but um, yeah, don't worry about that because you're working on shot placement. You're not working on how to sneaking up the animals or anything like that. So hiker difficulty lets you uh, easily locate the animals and do approaches and just practicing uh, the shooting. And uh, opinions, of course, vary widely uh, with this with this game on it. But when you're looking at difficulties, just as a sort of a side note here, most of the, the difficulty changes, the, the vast majority of the difficulty increase as you go up, uh, excluding Ranger because it takes out all the Hunter Sense information, uh, most of the difficulty is all, all on animal senses. So if you're not stalking the animals or sneaking up to them, uh, the difficulty level doesn't matter a whole lot. I mean, there's blood tracking that gets more difficult, but it's still fairly easy, even on Hunter difficulty, as it glowing through the Hunter sense. Uh, but yeah, that's where the vast majority of the difficulty lies when you increase difficulty in this game. Uh, it's on. It's primarily sneaking up on the animals. Uh, and yeah, as a, as a sidetrack, I think the sneaking in the game, the stalking in the game, in my opinion, is one of its weak parts. I don't think it's done that well. I think it's um, very digital and weird and not intuitive or not immersive. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't really want to go into any kind of rant or anything like that. But that's why I, one of the reasons I play on Hunter, actually I do the extremes. I go from Hunter to Ranger. Uh, when I want, because the range is a completely different game. Uh, but I find if you remove the unimmersive, um, the unimmersive, unintuitive sort of sneaking aspect of the game with, with it, uh, and you're viewing the animals and you're doing the shots, I mean, that's my favorite part of the game is uh, just watching the animals. Hiker's got the extended camera range. Uh, I just like watching the animals doing the herd or watching the herds doing the herd management and doing the shots so if that's what you like as well definitely just throw it on hiker uh because i find the i find the sneaking uh not a very fun part of the game how they have it implemented there's lots of games that do sneaking uh don't even have to be uh, hunting games but they do the the uh sneaking sort of stealth stuff uh very well but and it's, it's a weak part in the game, in my opinion, so I, I typically... I try to avoid it, because I, I just don't find it that fun. Uh, so bear that in mind. Don't worry about it if you want to uh, take the difficulty down. There's no shame in that. Uh, just... That's just my opinion on the on the little sneaking sidebar here while I'm waiting for these animals to come out. Some people like it, the sneaking, and the, they find it realistic or something. And But it's... Yeah, no, it doesn't... doesn't uh, doesn't quite do it for me there, so... Um, yeah, but if you're just sitting in a stand like this, waiting for animals to come out, the difficulty really doesn't matter too much anyways. Um, but Hiker's nice to have that extended camera so you can start learning the uh, the antler configurations and the, you know, how to tell fitness just from the antlers. So here comes some happy deer now, right on time. Well, a little bit early, but they're not quite there yet. So, these guys get to be our target. Two-star mature mule deer. A one-star adult. Here we go. And, speaking of the, the antlers, let's take our little camera out and go for a spin here. And see if we can pick one of these adults to shoot. My mule deer have all been wrecked. <laughs> for the most part. So, I don't have much worry of high fit. Uh guys to worry about too much. How's this guy looking, though? No, we're just looking for symmetry. He's got that um, early point there just being a little knob kind of thing, so he's that two-star mature, so he's going to be right around the middle fitness. Uh, He's looking okay, actually, that guy. How about you two over here? Kind of hard to see when the head is down. I typically don't do the young ones. They're a bit too random. But if you get an adult one star like this guy here, who is quite a loppy loo, he should be fairly safe to take out. And that one, that two star mature is probably safe too. Won't be too high. 
Uh, so, what we'll do... Oh, you can also practice on the, the does, too, if you want. Take out the... The, uh, the older ones. That's always okay to do, as long as you don't do it excessively. Uh, so, pick the, your favorite scope. Usually a lot of people are doing the 21 times. So the closer you can zoom in, the more precise you can uh, get the shot here. Recommended not to shoot a uh, laying down animal. The hitbox can be a little odd uh, when the, the model is laying down. Uh, so we will wait to stand up. Maybe we'll use this guy just to sort of um, analyze the shot because he's going to come in about the same angle. So they're slightly uh, quartering in. You can use the hunter sense dot if you'd like. If we uh, turn that on, we'll see it. You hold your breath, it'll saw it up. You can see it's pretty much right on the point. Uh, it's because we're we're fairly close. Uh, but I typically don't recommend using the hunter sense dot because some of them have a large dot and it can actually uh, block the vision. Look how old that guy is, though. Man, he's <laughs> I should probably take him out anyways, just because he's done for. He's not going to get any bigger. Uh, but it can block your vision on, on the bigger one. So typically I just use the Hunter Sense Dot to get a feel for uh, the wind direction. So right now we can pretty much ignore the, the wind and everything completely. Uh, they're so close. Uh, I just see how much it's going to drift a little bit. And uh, just remember where the, the middle of the dot is. And then turn it off and so you can just sort of remember, um, you know, if it's a bit left or up or down. Uh yeah, but uh, you get a nice clear picture here, and you just have to remember that we're pretty much bang on. You also don't have to worry about uh, zeroing too much when you're really close. Uh, that's a misconception that's actually in the game. Actually, well, he's actually at 100 uh, meters. But here, I'll just show that now, because it came up on Discord as well. And I'm still kind of surprised how people think the zeroing really affects it. It doesn't really affect it too much. As you can see, I'm going to go down to 50 meters. Look, it only raised it uh, like 2 inches on the animal. Maybe three inches or so. I mean, if you're zero off, you're still going to slug that lung. Uh, and then say we go up to 400 meters. Look, aim at the lung, you're still going to you're still gonna slug them, uh, even though it's too high. I mean, the only time the zeroing has an extreme thing is if you're way off, like 700 meters, and he's really close. Uh, so don't worry about it too much. A lot of the times, I'll just keep it at 150 meters no matter where I am. Because all I got to do is shoot a tiny bit lower. And you don't have to worry about zeroing at all. If you're at 200 meters, uh, which will be out here. It's only dropping a little bit too, so it's easy to adjust. So I wouldn't, don't sweat it too much. Just pick the zeroing that's closest that you're comfortable with. And then see the hunter sense dot. Uh, how it's sort of adjusting. Alright, so I'm going to bring it down to 100 because he's just about there anyways. And we'll actually do a shot because I've been talking for almost 20 minutes. Uh, so... Uh, basically, slightly quartering in, uh, just putting together what we've been talking about, just envision the 3D model, of course he's going to lay down again, so we'll switch to another one. Look at these, oh, could try to do a triple shot there. Uh, yeah, you just envision the 3D model, so you can see about where the lungs are, so what we can do is we can, I think you can just pause the game with a scope up, can you? Yeah, you can just do that, so what we can do is, uh, pick this guy. And you can go to the map, and fly in here, find your white tail, and you can just sort of uh, keep that in your mind. And if you do it enough times, it'll just sort of uh, sink in, right? So, you see, I've already forgot what angle he's actually at. He's kind of like this, isn't he? <laughs> Anyways, so you can see exactly where it is. This really helps when you're trying to place the heart shots. Um, but yeah, we're just, we're just going to be uh, picturing... The lung, so it's all all through here. You don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, but a lot of the times you also want to try and do double lung. You don't need to worry about double lung too much in the game. Uh, just focus on knocking out one. Other games it can certainly help, but uh, this game is always very focused on one organ and one organ only. Is the actual quickest way to take them out. Put as much damage as you can into one organ. Uh, so that's a little different in this game as opposed to others. Uh, but what is the guy I was trying to line up on? Is it this guy here? Yeah, see, he's uh, lopsided there. This guy must be... The young and the adults can look awfully the same. I'm pretty sure it's uh, this guy here, isn't it? They're getting really close now. 
Or is it this guy? No. Here sure is this guy. So that's it, and he's quartering in. Uh, you also don't have to worry about bones or shoulders too much if your um, tier of weapon matches them. So if I'm if it's a tier five animal and I'm shooting a uh, with a tier five tier five rifle, other games can quite penalize you for shoulders and bones. And this isn't real life, so don't worry about it too much. Uh, but if the, the tier's the same, typically the bone does have a factor, but not a massive one. Now, if you're doing the 300 on a tier 5 animal, the shoulder's not going to do too much at all. So don't worry about that. Just picture uh, the lung. Oh, he's going to give us a nice, perfect broadside. This is uh, exactly what you need. So we will take the shot, finally. So just vision uh, the 3D picture. And we're just going to go right for middle lungs. And the 300 has so much power to it that um, it's going to knock out that first lung that it hits. So let's go pick him up and just take a look. Maybe next uh, shot we'll try a longer one. Uh, but that's sort of the, the basics of all my info. I don't think I can think of any more advice, actually. You talk long enough, you get, you get it all out. <laughs> I get uh, comments sometimes, I, I, I do find it funny, that um, they'll say, yeah, it took you so long to get any information out, or <laughs> ramble so much. I'm like, well, that is kind of the point of the channel, really, is me rambling, so. Uh, but anyways, so uh, here he is, let's pick him up. And I also find it helpful if I try to predict what the shot will look like before I pick them up, uh, just to see, you know, how how I imagined the shot and how it actually was or how it actually turned out. So this one would be pretty um, uh, it was nice and close. So it should be pretty precise. I think I'm like center lung and slightly up, probably like an inch or two up off a of center lung on the left. Um, it would have it was an instant kill, so it would have put in uh, over double damage to that lung. Uh, when I'm talking about that, I mean the actual damage bar that shows up. And it would have entered, for sure, the right lung and would have exited the animal as well. So that is my prediction. Let's just take a look and see how we did. So there we are. So center lung, slightly high off of the center of the lung. So my prediction was right. And that is exactly what I was aiming for there. And it did do the skull on the left lung, and it did go through the animal so it's good to sort of predict that and so you can also see if you're going to be hitting an animal in behind um just kind of practice doing the prediction i find it helps to do it before actually harvesting the animal uh but that is exactly well as far as my textbook goes uh a textbook shot uh when you're doing the 300 you certainly don't need to aim for the heart it's got so much power to it take the easy shot uh, and then just drop them so, there he is, 52%, so he's right on the middle, and, uh, yeah, we'll just sell him up. Don't worry about the meat loss too much. You, you harvest so many animals in the game, I wouldn't really worry about it. Okay, uh, so I'm going to go down the creek here, and that's the guy, oh no, it's Whitetail there. But we'll keep going this way, and see if we can do a, a longer shot. So here we go, that wasn't too long. We have a one star white tailed deer out here. And I'm gonna actually back up to do a 200 meter shot if I can find a spot to do it. I mean, about 200 meters. There, so we'll try a longer one on him. Well, that's the wrong one. He's over here. We'll back up. Now, these days, I really don't do much longer than 200 meter shots. You can, but uh, if you're on Hiker, you only have a certain uh, range uh, that your camera can go. And usually I'm g always getting in range of the, the photo mode camera. So I can uh, view them. So I don't do long range shots that much anymore. But they're good to practice too. And 200 meters isn't really that long of a range in this game. Um, but I don't really recommend doing much farther. Uh, depending on the difficulty, right? So right, 200 there. Crouch position, always check your wind, 5 meters per second uh, to the left, uh, quartering away from us. 5 meters a second isn't very much, the wind does affect the bullets differently, so we'll have our hunter sense dot up. 
if we uh, zoom in on it, you'll notice that it is drifting left and down because we're at the 100 meter mark. So we're going to zero up the 200 and get the 100 cents going. So it is moving just a smidge to the left off of the dot. Um, so we don't really need the 100 cents dot anymore. We just know it's going to go slightly left. Now this shot, even if you do the 3D vision of this animal, you have no shot here. Except for my jokingly uh, one that I attempt to do sometimes. Uh, the rear leg artery shot. If you hit the kind of the outer back leg, you can do enough damage to the artery to successfully do a shot there. Uh, but you really do not have a shot when the animal is uh, facing directly away. Uh, sometimes when it lifts its head, you can try to do the back of the head like this. Uh, those are also fun shots to attempt to do. Uh, we could actually attempt to do that, depending on what he does. Uh, but it does ruin your trophy, remember? But for calling, it's not a big deal. So if he doesn't turn, that is what we'll actually try to do. Uh, you can load up again the encyclopedia, grab our white tail, and we're going to be looking at the brain. Now with the 300, typically we don't actually have to hit the brain. Uh, the skull has actually got a damage points itself, and you can just knock out the skull. That'll take the animal down. But we're looking at him like this. So if we do our organs, there you can locate where the where the brain is. So it's actually quite large in the model. Uh, it's about where you where you're expecting. Sometimes you'll do um, uh, face on. And it's important to remember uh, sort of the slopeness of the scope when doing this, because this will slow it down, of course. Um, and typically, you just aim at the top here. Uh, so here's his head. Just kind of aim at the, the topper part. Like, the brain sits a bit higher than maybe some think. Maybe some think it sits a bit lower, like down behind the eyes or something like that. But it actually sits near the top. And so there. So you can kind of see the skin there. So you'd aim just about in here. And I usually aim for, yeah, about the top part of that brain there. Because uh, this is just flesh. And there's not much skull protecting the brain up here. So yeah, but we're doing this shot. So pretty much we just have to go right here. And if his head's up straight, there isn't much. Well, there is flesh to do it, but there's not much skull protecting it either. So it's definitely a shot you can do if you're not worrying about uh, the trophy. We might actually attempt it uh, from this far away. Now he's a little angled anyways. Uh, we are zeroed at 200. We know it's going to be a smidge to the left. But we're crouched, so we're a little wobbly. But we'll see what happens. We also have to recognize that there's a delay. The bullets travel slower than you'll expect them to do in this game. Um, the real life bullets would be there quicker than they are. There's a yeah, a bit of a delay there, and you can actually see it fly through the air. So we are going to wait for him to lift his head. We're not going to have a much time, probably. Yeah, or maybe he'll turn for us. I'm fully zoomed in at 21 times. But you can you can pretend to be a sniper. And see here. Now he's probably beyond 200 at this point, so we're going to have to take a factor that it might drop a little bit. He's really enjoying his food. He's really... Oh, here we go. It's a whole breath. Oh, he's walking too. I don't, I don't think he's going to stop. Walking is always risky. We'll, we're going to try it anyways. Okay, I actually want to replay that back. Did the bullet fly off like in this direction? Interesting. I also find uh, when when you do shoot them uh, at over 200 meters or something like that, they do have like a rendering problem when they go down. Uh, but let's take a look there. Um, I'm trying to predict what happened with the shot, but I hit higher than I wanted to, like right at the top of the skull, I think. But maybe it was down in there. See, since he's moving, there is enough delay that you do not hit exactly where you're pointing. Um, there is enough uh, frames that happen in the animation where he does change, like the head's rotating and stuff. That's why it's always risky to do the headshots. Is the, the brain's a small target, the skull's a small target, and it's always moving around. Uh, so it is kind of risky. So I, I, I don't actually recommend doing that one. Uh, that's that's my patience level, and it's kind of fun to try to attempt. Uh, but that one, yeah, I kind of want to replay that back, because uh, maybe it was just the dirt kicking up. So I hit really at the top there. 
the uh am i gonna drown here river no. <laughs> uh then the bullet would have went through so to uh predict what i did there i think i hit the top and it went through yeah i actually have, i'm gonna have a hard time predicting this one uh, he's pretty small there. He was farther away, so it might have dropped down right into the brain. Yeah, let's take a look. Oh, his leg's all messed up there. Let's grab him here. It is brain. And it is penetration brain. But see, uh, my prediction was right. I hit right at the top of the lung. Or lung. Uh, the skull. So. Uh, but yeah, definitely brain kind of sniper shot there. Well, that's how you do that. That, that this is actually kind of surprising me. I didn't think I was that good. I, I did hit higher than I was. I was trying to hit down a bit more. Uh, that's what I was kind of worried. I almost zinged right over his head. Uh, I didn't knock out the skull, but that's because the brain took some of the damage. Uh, yeah, there you go. There's that shot. <laughs> Look at me, 11%. My, my animals are in rough shape <laughs> in this game. Oh, dear. That's about as low. White tails don't go below ten percent, so he's basically right at the right at the bottom. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it. Or half an hour in the video, man. I talk so much, the time just flies. I'm trying to think if there's anything else uh, we should go over. Uh, we can try and do a running shot. I'm finding them quite fun, actually. Now I don't really recommend um, doing the running shots, but we can get four bullets in here. And if if I don't worry about who I'm shooting, uh, we can do some running shots. It's fun. It's a fun little thing to practice uh, once in a while uh, to try to get two calls out of a single herd if you see two low fits in there. Uh, but it is really tricky uh, because of the amount of lead you have to give uh, give the animal, and it's always changing angle and it's always changing its speed. Uh, but I do find it sort of fun to do, so maybe we'll try some of that. Sometimes I do some really good shots, and sometimes I completely miss. Uh, oh, here we go. Hey, let's do them here. So we got some moving deer. Uh, we're going to keep it at 200. And let's see here. Oh, full speed's really hard. Uh, I might hold back. Here, let's try this guy. Oh, lead. Oh, he's running too fast. When they're doing that, <clears throat> it's real hard. Real difficult to do that when they're at that speed. So I might pick another one. I don't. I really don't want to like wreck them. So I can stir them up again. <clears throat> I'll get in a better spot. Maybe stir these guys up again and, and uh, try it. I want, I want to see what they are. I don't really want to... <clears throat> well, actually, I don't think I'm keeping this safe. So I could just let her fly here let's stir them up again yeah now that i think of it i'm not keeping this safe so i am going to let the bullets roll and uh let them fly out here now what happens is i also if i'm expecting to spook them i'll keep the zero a bit high to help as they run so well i'm curious as to uh who they are here what are we at okay 33 minutes or so. I mean, we might as well take some dough down. Oh, here, here's right here. So let's just, uh, let's just pretend they're all low fit. We're going to go for the three bucks. If not, we'll go for a dough. So we got a slight wind to left again. Undercent's dot will show. So it's, I'm going to have to aim a little low because I'm keeping at the 200 mark to help with the, the distance shooting. <clears throat> a quarter away, 3D vision. Of it, we're going to see, we're going to intersect the two lungs. And then get ready to let the bullets fly here. And one down. And, nope, too far forward. And I'm going to lose them here. Yeah, you need a lot of open to be able to do this. And when they're going at that fast, it's real difficult, so. Oh, we're not really going to get a great opportunity. Sometimes when you hit, they won't sprint away as fast. They'll kind of do a jog or a trot, so you will get some moments. Uh, when they're at that full that full speed, running horizontal in scope, 
Oh, man. No, it's... Uh, yeah, it's a rough one. I wasn't too focused when I was aiming at this guy. Uh, so the prediction, I think I was just center lung, really. Going through both. Yeah. So see, I was zeroed at 200. And he was only 100 away. So that doesn't mean the zero doesn't matter too much. Oh, I actually hit the heart. I wasn't aiming for the heart. But it's I mean, if you aim for the center of the lung, often you'll get this where you hit the top of the heart. And that's just bonus. All right, so you guys even exited out the other side. A 35% sell. Uh, there are deer... Okay, no, that's the spooked ones. Yeah, let's try up here. I'll try one more time. I think I have the same ones here. Problem is, after the shot, they're going to run in here. I'm not going to get much chance, I don't think. Wind's going at them, too. 120. We're going to keep 200 again. Yeah, wind's right at them. Four bullets ready. Uh, we'll take the guy up on the hill. And then, oh, that's too far away marking. And then we'll just see. We'll just try and hit anything. All right, nice broadside. 3D vision again. It's going to go. Do oh, you smell me? Oh, you're shaking your head no? Okay. I'll oh, see he just turned. Yeah, they're smelling me. All right, well, let's let her fly. That would have hit high. That hit the back. I only got one bullet left. Yeah, they just vanish too too quickly in these situations. Uh, it's good to do, like, Antigua Moon, nice in the open. Uh, have some fun with that. So let's just pick these ones up. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, I got the one bullet there. They're still running. No way I can make that shot. <laughs> yeah, I think we're off the end of here. But, uh... That's always something nice to practice, too. Is to try and get the leads figured out and... Have some fun with that. So this doe here, I hit awfully high on it. I don't really have much of a prediction on it. Caught some of the lung? Maybe a bit of the spine? Didn't drop her right away. Yeah, okay. Yep. So, cavity, spine, and top of the lung. And it knocked her. Okay, so it did do enough damage. It was a wonky shot to take. That's a really interesting one. Actually, at the angle she was there, it wasn't really much better of a shot <laughs> to do. Because she's in the middle of a turn. What a way to sneak that lung shot in. All right. And then th there's the running shot. So you'll end up hitting them in the back a lot because you, you have the instinct to not lead too much. So you end up shooting about here and then it hits back here. So it takes a while. A lot of times I'll aim in front. And then I'll hit, like, it'll whiz by in front of them, so... It's just a little tricky to get used to. And then here's this guy. He just fell right down. I don't even remember this shot. But, okay. Placed it fine. Too right, too far to the right, but there's an example with the, uh, the shoulder and the leg. Uh, it lost a little bit. But, I mean, even going right through there, didn't matter too much. Uh, so just crushed him as well. No, he was okay. But yeah, I'm not keeping the save, so uh, that's it. I do believe in a short 40 minutes, I think I went through all my little advice there. So check the encyclopedia, vision the 3D model, pick a stronger accurate caliber so you can uh, make sure to be able to see your harvest on messed up shots because uh, they probably will get knocked out regardless. And, uh, yeah, playing hiker difficulty. If you, uh, want to see a lot of animals practice the shooting and then slowly work your way up is what I'd recommend doing, or just stay in hiker. Uh, yeah, so that's it for now. Leave any comments or suggestions, uh, in the video. And, uh, yeah, a lot of exciting stuff coming with the way of the hunter, so stay tuned. Uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone.